Hello and welcome to Dubious Engineering and here we are at the uh, Alexandra Palace for the London Model Engineering Exhibition put on by Meridian Exhibitions. What a beautiful place, what a magnificent venue, really looking forward to getting inside and seeing what's going on. James. Nice Hi Howard, nice to meet you. How are you? I'm good. I'm Excellent. okay. We're here at the London the London Model Engineering Exhibition put on by Meridian. Yep. And it's a fantastic show. And you guys are who? We're the East Surrey 16mm group. So 16mm is the scale of the models that we're running today. They're running on O-Gauge track and they're models, narrow gauge models of railways uh, of a railway that runs between Darjeeling. Uh, and it runs in, through the Himala Himalayas, okay. so it's a mountain railway, it's a real railway that still exists, it's a World Heritage Site in India, and we're modelling those in miniature. One of our engines is just coming past now, that's a model of a B-Class. Um, these are real working miniature steam engines, so some of them run on coal or gas. Uh, or mess. This one running at the moment really is coal fired. It's amazing. I've just watched yeah. you stoking that thing up, if that's the right terminology. That's right, yeah. And we'll get some we'll get some detailed footage of that in just a few seconds. But that's absolutely incredible that it actually runs on very tiny pieces of coal. It's exactly right, yeah. So you fire it and drive it just as you would a full-size steam locomotive. It's just got a very small fire grate. It's about two square inches, the size of a large postage stamp. <laughs> So you need the right sense of humour to do it. You get about 10 minutes between firings. Uh, it also carries its own water supply. So as it's going round, it's actually pumping its own water into the boiler. So it acts principally like a, a regular steam engine. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Is this something that you've made or, or is this something that you buy? Commercial, most commercial uh, steam locos in this scale tend to be gas fired because anyone can drive them. If you drive a gas cooker, you can drive a gas fired loco. So it's to try and open the hobby up to anyone so you can be a bank manager and still drive a steam engine, you don't have to be an engineer. Coal-fired ones, you need a little bit more of a sense of humour, they tend not to be on the mass market, they tend to be built by cottage industries. So, uh, you know, guys in their small workshops and things like that producing small batches of engines. So this was an engine that was built in the UK and it would have originally been intended to be gas-fired, but somebody has converted it to coal-firing. Uh, it's built by a guy called John Shaw and uh, he built them in small batches and I was very lucky to get one because he stopped making them now. I've made a few mods to it because it's just like a car, if you run a steam engine a lot it needs maintaining. Yes. So I've done a few mods to it over the years but it's, as you've seen it's absolutely absorbing and, I, and that's why I think I've stuck at the hobby is because it is just so absorbing. It's, it's, it's so much fun seeing people's faces when they see you're running a real coal fired steam engine that's this big. This magnificent, some of the members of the team here are family by the sounds of things. Um, do, you, do you keep this set up at home or is this sort of stored? Where do you store all of this magnificent equipment? So, so this layout is actually owned by a friend of mine, but he's short of storage, so it's kept in my garage at the moment. <laughs> uh, so your car sleeps outside at the yeah, moment? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, we take it to shows all over the country. I think this layout's been to France as well. So we take it to exhibitions like this one. Um, these models are primarily aimed at being run in garden railways, so people have this sort of kind of size track in their garden, friends of ours, members of the club, and you go around your mate's place, have a few beers and a barbecue and run trains, basically. Magnificent. Um, so I don't have a garden railway myself, but I'm lucky that my club has a permanent outdoor layout, so I go and run on that. Uh, Excellent. So there must be thousands of these tracks all over the country. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But Pete, you tend not to see them because yeah, they're sort of invitation only yeah, type yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Where do you get such small coal from? I know that sounds like a silly question. No, not at all. Can you just get a big lump of coal and crush it up, or do you need um, spe a, a specific sort of dryness level of, of, of coal? So people still, I gather, in rural areas, still run their central heating off of coal, these little grains about the size of a pea, which are perfect for this. So you can buy this central heating coal, and it's anthracite, very, very pure coal, and we can run them on that. So you um, can buy bags of... You can buy bags of, of coal. Because, tiny... Yep, people heat their homes instead of gas or oil. Yeah. Some people heat their houses with this anthracite coal. That's amazing, yeah. Um, yeah. It burns beautifully, very, very hot, and very, very cleanly. Yeah. But it's a little bit boring, so we tend to buy household coal as well. That's a high sulphur coal. 
and uh, you can break that up into little lumps like you say you can smash it up yourself with the right sense of humour a beer or a cup of tea <laughs> watching a rubbish film <laughs> and a hammer and yeah a, and yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah yeah and uh, so if you want to better get a bit of clag on a bit yeah, of smoke you yeah, can do that yeah brilliant okay why don't we get into a little bit of detail in one of these guys then let's pull we'll, we'll get some footage of the front of, of here as well because it's absolutely beautiful what you've the setup that you have here it it looks absolutely superb as you say this was based on um a trip through the himalayas a track that runs through the himalayas into darjeeling that's right yes and um and some of the detail work and uh, in, in the models here is absolutely magnificent to see so it's not just engineering there's a large element of art that's actually happening here as well isn't there yeah so yeah so great. so I'm I, and that's what's so fantastic about this hobby is you don't have to be an engineer to be into it you can be a model maker a painter a track layer I'm an engineer by trade and it's these kind of this engineering that got me into engineering for a living yeah so I've always been interested in the mechanisms how the pumps the pipe work the machining works on the locos but there's other people who are much more artistic than me and have got the artistic eye to paint and shade and, so and build these sorts of models. I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, with a paintbrush, I, you know, I'm useless. <laughs> I can run a lathe and a mill, but I can't paint things like this. So. Understood, understood. And that's what's so fun about the hobby, because yeah. in the club, you've got this whole broad spectrum of people that can do everything from this to lay track. Everybody, yes, mm. everybody can uh, can take part in yeah, this. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Magnificent. Right, show us how to stoke up one of these engines. Then. Okay. Right, well, here she comes. Let's get some footage of that as well. Right, so what are we going to do now then, James? Uh, we're just going to stop to build the fire up. She's okay. been running for about 10 minutes or so now, and that's about the sort of time between firings. Uh, this is exactly the same as a full-size steam locomotive, just in miniature. So you can see the boiler pressure here. I'm right up at the red line, which is maximum pressure for this boiler, and the safety valve's just feather in there. You can see the water level in the boiler in the sight glass. I'm right up at the top at the moment. And exactly the same as a full-size steam loco, the driver's controls are the same as well. So this is a regulator, like the throttle on a car. This is the reverser, which sets the direction of the loco. And this is the steam blower, and we use the steam blower to pull the fire up to really get it going hot when we've added more coal or we're trying to clear ash and junk out of it. So it's been running for a little while now, so I'm just going to clear the ash out just by raking the fire a little bit. And I'll just put the steam blower on just to wake that up a bit. I'm just going to add some more coal. This is, this is actually household coal that I'm going to add here. Um, and uh, it's fun because it's uh, quite a high sulphur coal, so it adds a bit of smoke and a lovely smell to the fire. There's nothing like the smell of a coal burning fire. Exactly right, yeah. And uh, usually, soon after adding this, you'll see the smoke coming out the chimney. <laughs> oh, and there she goes, almost immediately. Yeah. Look at that. So now we can head off. Now we've built the fire up. Open the regulator. Cylinders get a bit cold after you stop for a minute or two, so uh, we just have to wait the condensate to clear out. And uh, hopefully she should accelerate away. And there she goes. That is quite possibly the smallest steam engine I think I've ever seen. It's uh, absolutely captivating, isn't it? And now I can smell that coal burning. James, thank you ever so much. What a magnificent experience. No problem at all. Any time. Take care, mate. Cheers for now. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. And if you're enjoying the content on Dubious Engineering, please don't hesitate to give us a big old thumbs up and subscribe for more content in the future. And perhaps put a comment or two in, in the comment sections down below and uh, we'll do our best to reply and get your answers questioned. Get your answers questioned? Get your questions answered. All right, guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Take care, have a wonderful evening. Cheers and beers.